Hey, Orange One here, and we're going to be going over in this tutorial caravans and workshops. We'll be starting off with workshops, uh, going over what they are, kind of how they work, and going into some details on how to make the most money from them. And then we'll go into caravans. Um, first of all, before we get into all of that, you have to consider something when you're watching these videos on how much money caravans and workshops make. And that's the uh, trade skill here. It gives you different perks. That actually change how um, how your character is specialized. So you can uh, specialize for workshops giving you information and more money, or you can do it with caravans, and you essentially have that choice for mo throughout most of the Let's Play or your um, your game. Now, what these things really are is workshops are things in cities like Hubyar here that um, produce you money. So if I look at Hubyar here. Um, it doesn't even, because it's not my settlement, I don't really see anything about it here, but you can actually, um, look at your income here and you can see right here, I've got some workshops and some caravans that are giving me some money. So these are essentially things that just generate money for you. Um, and they're only found in cities like hubby are like, you don't see workshops in little, um, villages. You find them in what the game calls uh, towns, but I think it was more of a city. Um, so if you actually want to get one of these things, you have to jump into a city. And you need to have about 15,000 cash. It's 15,000 always for a caravan. It varies for the workshops. But um, if you try and go into the city, oftentimes it'll just dump you out way outside here and if you hold down alt it will show you all these different things like that uh, brewery um that's one of the stores around here there's an olive press there's all kinds of stuff now instead of walking all the way up there there's a little uh, life pro tip you can go to the tavern and then just step outside the tavern and that's usually a pretty central place in that settlement see look i'm pretty close now I could go to the brewery or the linen weaver. Now, basically, if you want one of these workshops, uh, you just walk up to it and talk to one of the guys in there. I believe this brewery is our brewery uh, that we've already purchased. But you just walk up to any of the dudes in there. And um, re remember, I'm holding down alt that's telling me where it is. And I walk up to one of these guys, press F, talk to them. And then usually it will tell you like, do you want to buy this workshop? And if you bought it, it'll give you this menu. And then so you can just like straight up sell it for some cash. Um, or you could change what it is. And then uh, you could be like, hey, I want to produce this instead. Now, workshops make different amounts of money. If I change this to a smithy, it's actually going to make less money here than if it's a brewery. It, it, um... Let me just kind of go back to, sorry, I don't want to change this. So if you look here, this brewery actually already was a brewery before I bought it. Um, you can repurpose them, but usually it's just a good idea to go with what the game has there because it's using resources that are local. So if we look here, we have like a flax uh, and then there's also a desert horse. And where's the other one? Right up there, Desert Horse. So the, you wanna go with things that are actually local here. The brewery actually probably isn't making the most money here. It's probably the one who's making linen here, um, who's gotta be making the most money out of anyone. So I sh probably should have bought this guy's um, business of the linen uh, if I really wanted to make some money. Now, Kind of another way of seeing the money that these things make is if you cl click on L for going to your clan menu and then you go over to other, it will show you these workshops. The brewer's making pretty good money. I think they're getting grain from like local villages somewhere nearby. Not It must not be one of the bound ones, but they're getting them because he, he's making a pretty good profit. So he's got some grain in the city. And then I've got some other carpenter who's like at some city way up over there. But if we look here, we can look at also the trade menu. And you can see, oh, look, they're producing beer here, right? 
Um, so you can see like the stuff getting produced in the city and um, kind of, it, it basically is if you have the prerequisite ingredients, that'll make you get more profit. And if there's a high demand for the item, then uh, it's going to sell better, right? And what's also interesting is that caravans will actually buy items in one city and tr uh, bring it over to another city. So you could, in theory, have like a brewery over here that's making a brewery over there have less profit. Realistically, you don't have to worry about that too much, but you don't want to build like a, a brewer, like a brewery where there already is a brewery because you're competing with them and you'll make less profit, essentially. So, yeah, that's that's the main idea with that. The caravans, they are kind of interesting. I'll just kind of wait for a little while in game so you can kind of see. Um, like those villagers, they just brought in some grain. So they, they're trading in grain from somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but see, they just brought in that grain. So you can kind of see where that's, uh, I think they're from like somewhere up there. And so, yeah, they're they're dropping off goods and there's like a caravan right here. They do the same thing, but they just go between cities. Um, so let's just go over to one of these caravans just to have a look. See, now you can buy things straight from them here um, and they'll give you a price that's somewhere in between the two cities that they're buying and selling from. But you can see what they're carrying. And so you can produce goods and then export it to different places. Uh, and you, it means you can actually do some monopolizing. So you can be a little bit of a bandit and go attack someone's like grain villages in a rival faction. And then they're not going to have any grain. They won't produce very much beer. And then you can just go bring all this beer over to them. Uh, so there's a little bit of gaminess to that. Um, you can also just straight up attack them. And they can also just give you a little bit of information. Um, so that's kind of nice if you run into a caravan. I think this caravan is about to go in there. Yeah, so you can see they sold the silver and the hardwood. So they're going to be delivering goods to and from places. Um, but you really should rely on a supply chain that's local if you want to make the most money. You could if you... Actually, there's a weird little uh, hack that I heard about. If you bring in, let's say like I brought in a ton of um, grapes here. Grapes are pretty rare here. If I had a ton of grapes and I sold them all here, they'll actually go down in uh, the number that they have. And so you can basically set up a, a little economy. Um, you can give some supplies so that some place can make some product. So you guys remember that grain that was sold here? It's already gone. <laughs> oh man. I'm pretty sure it got turned into beer pretty quickly there. They've got their priorities right here in Happy Hour, let's just say that. Um, also something to keep in mind, I've been playing around with this, is that the Asari, they don't really have any iron um, workers, as far as I can tell, in any of their cities. So if, if you're trying to get Asari armor, you might want to build, um, build one of those workshops, because they actually do affect, the workshops do affect what goods you see in here also with the weapons and armor so like yeah they've got like some good weapons um but and like some decent armor but they don't have a whole lot of it it's pretty um pretty much just scraps that they've had sold to them so these things would be better if there's an actual army armory in town so i've been considering uh repurposing that brewery and turning it into an iron um uh, like a blacksmith but that would mean I would need to source myself some iron from one of these villages around here. And it does not look like we have much iron around here, which kind of makes sense the, as to why they don't have much uh, armor in the game, you know? Yeah, there's like no one producing any iron around here. So they're pretty much locked um, economically with that or military wise with that. So it's, it's kind of rough for them, you know. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about caravans. Uh, the thing about caravans is if you go out and buy one, like if I, first of all, the a caravan, you've seen what they are. They go between places. 
Uh, to have a caravan, you need to talk to one of these guys up here, or you can go into town and find one of the special NPCs. So you go up to this dude, um, you talk to him, and then you say, I want to form a caravan. They'll tell you um, you need to pay 15000 and you need one companion to lead them. So you have to give them a companion. I've heard some people say that's not a good use of a companion, but if you looked at uh, my character, they're easily making 500 a day per caravan. Um, so I think it's well worth it to use a companion for that. Now, I don't think the caravans are affected much by where they spawn. They just kind of essentially get trade rumors how we do. And also a cool little thing to highlight is that I've got a perk that shows me all of the trade rumors that they've collected. Like these aren't places that I've been to recently. This is places that my caravans have been to recently. So they're telling me more recent prices for those places. And then I can go exploit that. You want to be careful with them because they're going to lose a lot of money. Now, if I look here at the caravans, um, I think they're right here. They've got 45 people. I literally just started this one. The caravans, they start with 30 people. They can get up to 45. Um, and you got to be thinking that they've got to hire those units. Like these characters have to do what we have to do in game. They have to buy things. They have to maintain a budget. They have to pay wages. They have to do all that. They have to recruit units. Everything that we have to do, these NPCs have to do, which is part of the reason the economy is kind of interesting right now. But anyways, this... This person, not only do they have to buy materials to sell, they're going to need to um, pay their, their troops uh, and, and get more troops. So they've got all these expenses for the first like three or four days at least. You're, I saw a loss of like maybe 300, 400 per, or around there um, per day, at least for my first one. I think it was cheaper and better later on. Uh, essentially, they're just having to pay for materials and wages. So expect a loss, but once they get going, they really start going. Look at the last month, uh, Jin got over a thousand and their party was 200. Uh, one caveat with caravans is that they are more risky than a workshop. A workshop stays in a city and it only gets messed up if the city gets sieged and ruined after the siege. Um, a caravan can totally get raided. So like in my Let's Play, I was at war with Batania. It was actually after the save point. Um, but I was at war with these guys and um, they attacked one of my caravans and they totally killed one of my caravans and the 15K was just gone. Just that companion uh, survived and was at a tavern that was nearby and I could pick him up again. But I had to, I'd lost all the investment money from the caravan. So I, yeah, you want to be kind of careful about that with the focusing on trade character and starting wars, not the best combination. It, unless you're going to focus more on workshops that are more deep in the country. Like if you're trying to be an Asari merchant, you might want to put some workshops down here, have more in the center of the nation so that they're a little bit more protected and less likely to get raided. Um, yeah, it's they could be super, super profitable, but it's kind of weird because your companions, they don't get trade experience. So if I go to, um, I think I, yeah, let's go to L for the clan menu. And if I look at like uh, Blag, he's been going for a long time, actually um, doing this and you can see that his trade is still zero. Like he was my first NPC companion. I put him in a caravan as soon as I could, and he literally hasn't gotten one experience point from it. Now he has actually gotten, um, I believe a little bit of scouting I've seen go up. I think that's because he's my scout uh, still. So although he's running around on his caravan, he's getting that scouting experience with the clan role enabled. But uh, unfortunately, He's not getting any better trade experience, so he's not going to get any better deals, which I'm a little bit irritated about. But I think they did that because if we go to C and go to our character here, um, trade, you actually learn by operating caravans. So I get better as a trader. 
And one thing also that I forgot to show here, I didn't even know is a thing. If you click here, this gives you um, information on the effect that you get from the skill. And then this tells you how to learn. Just a little caveat, if you're coming to this from that video, there was one tiny little thing that I forgot to put in there or didn't know to put in there. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my tutorial on caravans and workshops. You can make a whole lot of money doing this. Like it's the most profitable is what I've heard. Um, ignore the rumors about the workshops all being about wood. That was a bug that was in the first couple days. It's really all about getting locally available goods and selling it. Um, thank you for joining me. This has been Orange One.